Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our night of mindfulness meditation. I'm James Wetzel, the producer of adult programs at the Museum of Science, and I am thrilled to introduce our special guest this evening. Before I do, um, I, as many of you, I hope, already know, earlier this week, the museum participated in Blackout Tuesday, where we paused all of our live streaming virtual programming for the day. However, that is not the end of our engagement in this historic time. Black lives matter, as do the invaluable and historically underreported contributions of the Black community to STEM fields. We will amplify those voices, and we stand with the people of our Boston community. Tonight, we are back live with an event that I am very excited to be bringing into all of your homes. We are joined by Maite from the Institute for Integrative Mindfulness and Movement, who is going to take us on a journey about the science of mindfulness and lead us on a guided meditation practice inspired by the Butterfly Garden of the Museum of Science. Tonight is a part of our current virtual season of adult programming, which is a part of our MOS at Home initiative. We have turned the Museum of Science into a virtual museum, offering free STEM-related programming on a daily basis through our digital platforms. And as a part of that, we have launched our subspace adult programs after dark channel to host tonight's event and the rest of our upcoming lineup. We have some incredible programming still to come, still to even be announced, all free, all virtual and all for adults. So we hope that you will check out that lineup and come back and keep hanging out with us after dark. A little bit later on in the evening, Maite will open the evening up for a Q&A with all of you. So if you do have questions throughout the evening, feel free to submit those using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen if you're watching with us through Zoom. I need to thank our friends from the Lowell Institute for their continued support of the adult programming at the museum. Without them, we would not be here tonight, this event would not be happening, and it would not be free. So please join me in a huge virtual round of applause and thanks to our friends at the Lowell Institute. Once again, I thank you for joining us. Now please join me and welcoming into the Zoom, your host for this evening, Maite. Take it away. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a night of mindfulness meditation with the Museum of Science in Boston. Um, I am Maite. I am the founder of the Institute for Integrative Mindfulness and Movement. I am a meditation teacher, mindfulness meditation teacher, and a master teacher in Pilates. I founded the Institute for Integrative Mindfulness and Movement in order to spread well-being and active healthy lifestyles to corporations, organizations, such as the Museum of Science and individuals from all walks of life. So it is with great pleasure uh, to be here with you tonight. And as we are uh, arriving in this moment, this unique moment that we have together, let's um, take a moment to arrive here and take a few breaths, maybe closing your eyes, taking a few deep breaths, sensing the inhale coming in and the exhale coming out of the body. Sensing your body sitting here or perhaps lying down wherever you are in this place, in this room, in this very moment. And then sensing the environment around you. Maybe the temperature in the room, the support of the floor, the earth underneath you. And then checking in how you're entering with this moment. Whenever you are ready, you can reopen your eyes if they were closed. So for tonight's program, we're going to learn a little bit more first about the science of mindfulness. Then uh, we'll go together into a beautiful mindfulness meditation practice that um, uh, was inspired by the beautiful butterfly garden at the Museum of Science. And then lastly, I'll open up to a discussion with any question and sharing regarding your experience that you're having tonight with us. So as you may know, mindfulness has been a practice for millennials. 
it has been passed on from generations to generation. So we as human beings must have found some value in it, in the capacity of waking up, of cultivating present moment awareness. And this is a capacity that is innate in each and every one of us. We were all born with the capacity to cultivate present moment awareness equally. So today more than ever, living in the present moment, day by day, moment by moment, embracing all the natural changes of life, just like a butterfly is what we are called for. And one gift that we have um, as human being is also the ability to use our hands, our minds, and our hearts to create, to create technologies, to create scientific studies, to help us understand, and in particular, to help us understand the science of mindfulness. This is a science that can be um, intriguing and fascinating, but it's still in the very early stages. So when you hear about the science of mindfulness, or when you read, just always keep in mind, where does that information come from? What is the source of that information? Are there real facts? Because it's still a very new science. Um, if you take an example over the last decade, about 5,000 articles have been published from scientific study uh, on the mindfulness and its benefits, as opposed to maybe 50,000 in the research on heart diseases and uh, exercises. So it's still very, very new. So let's go into uh, learning a little bit more into the science of mindfulness with a poll. I thought that would be interactive to um, learn about the science of mindfulness through that. So I will invite you to all vote. Let's go into question one. With aging, the brains become, do you think, thinner or thicker? Let's take a few moments to place all the votes in the box. I can see the votes are increasing up and up. Are you making your mind do you think thinner or thicker? And most of you, 55% of you have answered that you think the brain becomes thinner with age. And actually you are right, it becomes thinner. But um, thanks to uh, Lazar and all in 2005, we find out that with advanced meditator, maybe meditator who have practiced for over 30 years, so the champion of meditation, the brain can actually become um, thicker or maintain its density with time. Um, the part of the brain that is affected by that is the insular cortex and the prefrontal cortex, which explains why maybe um, people who have meditated for a long time as they age, they have a better working memory because that impact is part of the brain. So let's go to the next question. All right, next question is a true or false. Gene expression can change during meditation sessions. What do you think, true or false? We have a few more, few more people to put their vote in. Yeah, and 83% have answered that this is true, 17 false, and yes, this is true, actually. So that was in 2013, uh, Levratsky and all uh, decided to do a study on the telomeras activity and the gene expression. And what they found is that uh, with meditator, um, the genes related to inflammation uh, were turned down. There was less activity and the gene associated with DNA repair, in particular, the telomere health were up. So if you take a chromosome on each end, um, you have a little piece called the telomeres. And the telomeres there, um, if you compare that to your shoelaces, there's that little piece of plastic that keep your shoelace healthy for quite a while. But of course, in times with wear and tear, they're thinning out. And what they find out is that that particular part 
doesn't um, thin out as much and generate and repairs. So pretty fascinating. It's still very new and it's in early stage, but hopefully with time we'll know more about what's happening to our gene expression. Let's go to question number three. <laughs> it's again a true or false. With mindfulness meditation practice, conflict attention increases. Is this true or is this false? And we're seeing a lot of 50-50 increases, decreases. We need a few more votes. It's very close. And most of you have answered that it is false. Well, guess what? It's true. <laughs> With mindfulness, meditation practice, conflict attention increases. So what does that mean? is that when we practice mindfulness meditation, we can um, use some practices called um, focus awareness practice. So we choose to direct our attention on a particular object of attention. So for instance, you will choose to bring your attention on your breath, or you will choose to focus your attention onto sounds or body sensations. And by bringing your attention into one point of attention, so let's say your breath, you're going to train the muscle of your mind to stay aware and awake by just following the breath, following the breath. During that time, it is very likely that you are going to have thoughts about what you're going to do tomorrow or what happened yesterday because the mind is getting bored sometimes by just following the breath. But as soon as you notice that and you label thinking, you can bring the mind back to the breath and therefore that helps you get better attention. So for people, for instance, with uh, ADHD or we're about to pass an exam, that can be very useful to train your mind in this way. So let's go see question number four. Right, the practice of mindfulness can help us spend less time in the default mode network of the brain, which is associated with self-referential, self-experiential. So what do you think? The default mode network of the brain, which is sometimes called the CEO of the brain, is it associated with the self-referential or the self-experiential? So we're seeing a stronger tendency right now towards self-experiential. We have another 50 voters and 70 percent of you have answered the self-referential that is correct the default mode network dmn is associated with the self-referential so self-referential is anything that relates to your self-identity uh, I uh, refer to my past through memories or uh, I plan tasks for the future or I compare myself to someone or a performance that I've done. So this is associated with self-referential, which sometimes can sometimes increase stress because we tend to tell ourselves stories, stories that sometimes are not true. Um, and through mindfulness meditation, we can learn to spend less time with the self-referential and more time with the self-experiential. For instance, just like I shared previously, spending more time sensing into the breath, sensing into the body, feeling the air in the room. And then you can be in the self-experiential that can help you regulate, for instance, emotions. All right, wonderful. Let's go into question number five, and that's the last one. According to a scientific study by Killingsworth in 2011, the percentage of time we are not in the present moment is greater than 50% of the time or less than 50% of the time. So what do you think? So it looks like we have a strong tendency of thinking that more than half of the time we are not into the present moment. Well, guess what? For the 2% of you who voted less than 50% of the time, you are right, but it's really close. <laughs> the result that we're given was 
49.6% of the time we are not into the present moment. So what Killingworth and his team did, um, they uh, sent three text messages on a regular basis. And they ask one, what are you doing? Two, what is the percentage of time? Um, uh, what's on your mind in this moment? And three, how is your mood? Uh, and then based on what they got, more 49% of the time people say, no, I don't feel I am in the present moment at this time. Um, and they would notice that when they were in the past or the future, their mood tended to be less positive. And there was a higher report of feeling great when people felt that they were connected to the present moment. So I hope that is inspiring for you. For me, it's very inspiring. Um, I find the science of mindfulness very um, fascinating. And on that note, uh, let's uh, take the poll away. And I hope you're still here, that you're not somewhere. Come back if you're not in the present. And um, we can see how the science of mindfulness promotes well-being. And also we can wonder now, but what is mindfulness, right? What does that mean? So there is a definition as we are going into a short practice together that I would like to share with you. Mindfulness means paying attention to the present moment, to our experiences with openness, with curiosity, and with a willingness to be with what is. So on that note, with the intention of cultivating what's arising here right now in our present moment experiences without as much as possible not getting lost in the past or the future, we are going to go into practice together. So let's take a moment to sit and find a comfortable posture. You can sit maybe on your chair or on the floor. You do not have to sit cross-legged. If maybe lying down would be more supportive of your being right now, please listen to your needs. And as we are entering into that mindfulness practice, inspired by the beautiful butterfly garden at the Museum of Science. We invite you to choose if eyes closed or open will serve you best to fall awake, not asleep into the present moment. Now taking a moment to sense into your body, feeling your feet in contact with the floor Maybe sensing if your feet feels warm or cool, moist or dry. Maybe sensing the contact of your skin with the air or your socks or your shoes. And then sensing into your legs, perhaps the contact of the thighs with the chair. Sense of weight of groundedness, feeling the buttocks in contact with maybe the cushion, the couch, noticing how you are balancing across your seat bone, or if you are lying down, sensing the support of the back with the floor. And then Inviting your posture to be upright, but not rigid. Allowing the spine to be erect. The torso to be open. Letting your arms fall naturally along your sides. Hands can be together or on top of each other or resting on your laps. Sensing into the hands, any sensations. Maybe such as tingling, pulsing. Sensation of contact of the hands with the air in the room. Or with your thighs. And then inviting the neck and head to balance 
on top of your spine. I'm taking a few moments here to notice if you're holding perhaps unnecessary tension in the forehead, perhaps in between the eyebrows, in the jaw areas, in the shoulder, and if possible, as you are taking a few deep breaths, inviting any of this tension to soften. And if not, it is not a problem. We are not trying to fix or change our experience. We are just learning to meet this moment just as it is. And now noticing the natural flow of each in-breath and each out-breath, traveling in and out of the body. Maybe noticing the air coming in through the nostrils and the air coming out of the nostril being a little bit warmer, a little bit more moist. And now noticing the sensation of the breath into the chest. And if this feels too much to bring awareness to your breath in this moment, knowing that you can always re-anchor to the sensation of your feet or your hands, it is not a problem. But otherwise, bringing back the attention to feeling the chest, expanding, and contracting. Expanding your awareness of the in-breath and the out-breath into the chest so you can fully feel the three dimension of your chest. Noticing all the subtle movement of the rib cage, expanding front and back, side to side. and deflating. And then now turning your attention into sensing the breath into the belly. On the in-breath, feeling the belly rising, And on the out breath, noticing how the belly is falling, deflating. Curious of all the sensation, the subtle movement of the breath, moving freely in and out of the body. And it is very possible that as we are sitting here, you are noticing the wandering of the mind. And this is not a problem as we have learned. Minds are like a factory of thoughts. So noticing, maybe labeling thinking without judging, without scolding yourself. And with kindness and curiosity to what you experience, simply returning to sensing the breath moving in and out of the body. And maybe choosing to bring the awareness to one point where you can feel the breast particularly vivid, perhaps into the nose or the chest or the belly. And just choosing one, it doesn't really matter which one, the one that feels most natural to you.
And instead of perhaps describing the breath, seeing if you can for a few moments of silence, being with the sensation of the breath, noticing if the breath feels long or short, shallow or fast, slow or deep, whatever it can be for you. And then now noticing your entire body being breathed here. Sensing a sense of maybe weight, gravity, rootedness within the architecture of your bones and muscles and tissues that are supporting you here physically in this moment, in this place. And now bring into your own mind's eye a place, a place that you particularly like, maybe a place that you've been before where you feel safe, peaceful, at ease. A place perhaps in nature or outdoor. could be a beautiful meadow where you're sensing a soft breeze in your cheeks and before your eyes you can see beautiful flowers maybe a red cardinal flowers or sunflowers or blue sage, or daisies, whatever flowers that you would like to see, bring them in. Perhaps you are in a free orchard surrounded by fruit trees, such as apple trees, cherry trees, peach trees, Maybe some of them are in full bloom or others are already producing their fruit. And you can maybe notice the delight of the air. Smelling with all those delicate perfumes from the trees. And perhaps you are in the middle of a forest with tall trees, such as maples or oak, or in an exotic forest with many luxuriant plants. You can hear many birds and wildlife all around you. Or simply, you are at the Museum of Science in the Butterfly Garden looking out at the views on the Charles River with the sun beaming on the waves of the river, forming diamonds of light. So now taking a moment to pick in which place you would like to be, in which place you would feel at ease, peaceful, 
Um, just seeing what time of the day it is. What season? And what it feels like in the body to be in this place of comfort. Maybe feeling warmth in the cheeks or an opening in the chest or release in the muscles. Just taking a few moments here to explore. What are you noticing right now? And it may feel right to add or remove one thing in this place to bring in more comfort, ease, peace. So taking a moment to bring in or take out what you need. And now visualizing a beautiful butterfly. could be a very small butterfly, such as the Western Pygmy Blue, which is the smallest butterfly. It's only half an inch wide. Perhaps it could be a very large butterfly, such as the Queen Alexandra Birdwing, which is 12 inch wide with these beautiful black and iridescent blue colors. Or perhaps you are seeing a butterfly anywhere in between with the bright colors, like the monarch butterfly, perhaps, or with solid colors, or metallic one, or maybe if you are in the forest, you are encountering a butterfly with a camouflage, mimicking a tree. So taking a few moments to really see in your own mind eyes that beautiful butterfly, whether real or from your imagination. Maybe it's flying up in the air delighting you of its beauty. Or it just landed of one of those flowers in the meadow. Or perhaps it's sipping at the nectar of a fruit fallen in the tree orchard. And as you are sitting here, connecting to this butterfly, taking a few moments to sensing within you which qualities does this butterfly has. Is it peacefulness? Lightness? Elegance, beauty, brightness, luminosity. Which qualities does this butterfly add to you? And now seeing if you can embody that butterfly and bring those qualities 
directly into yourself, into your direct experience. Could be just one quality. Maybe it's freshness. Maybe it's joy. Maybe it's calm. And as you are connecting to the quality of this butterfly, sensing into your body where this quality is being felt. Maybe you're noticing your breath being slower. Or your heart opening up. Or your face smiling. And if not much is happening, that is fine too. It is just a practice. If the mind is elsewhere, just bring it back one more time to seeing this butterfly. And breathing in, visualizing the butterfly and breathing out, sending out the quality of the butterfly. So maybe in, visualizing the butterfly on the in-breath, out, sending the quality of Perhaps beauty if it's the one you have chosen and breathing out. So in butterfly, out beauty. And I'll let you continue for a few more moments with your own quality and at the own pace of your breath. as we are sitting here practicing together, I would like to share a quote from Maya Angelou, who wrote about the butterflies. We delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely we admit the changes it has gone through to achieve that beauty. We delight in the beauty of the butterfly but rarely we admit the changes it has gone through to achieve that beauty. So now seeing as you are receiving this beautiful word, you can take a moment for yourself to hold your experience with full awareness. When we're practicing mindfulness, we talk about the two wings of mindfulness. One wings of the Mindfulness meditation is to hold our experience fully present of whatever is arising in the present moment, whether the experience feels neutral, pleasant or unpleasant. And the other wings is the cultivation of meeting each and every moment with a kind attention, without judgment, with friendliness and curiosity toward the experience as if we were welcoming a good friend. So seeing if you can sense right now, what is your experience? What are you noticing? And if you can cultivate a kind attitude toward this experience for whatever it is. Now, as the meditation is shortly coming to an end, 
I think you meant to send those qualities that you have found in the butterfly toward yourself, qualities of perhaps kindness, of peace, of beauty. And knowing that you can always find these qualities, they are already embedded in you. Taking a moment to appreciate yourself as already being whole and complete. And if this is possible, sending out these well wishes to all the participants in this webinar, which is of peace, which is of kindness, which is of love, which are much needed nowadays. And maybe sending those qualities out the qualities that you value and care about to the people you love and to the world out there. And knowing that through the practice of mindfulness, we can continue day by day by cultivating these qualities, just like the butterfly who is going through tremendous transformation, starting as a caterpillar and one day flying free like a butterfly, we too, through our action, through living a life awake, in mindful awareness, we too can take action to cultivate value that we care about. Whenever you are ready, taking a few deeper breaths, sensing your body here. And then on your own pace, reopening your eyes and maybe taking a stretch or a sip of water and discovering before your eyes the beautiful butterflies on the screen. They are the butterfly from the garden at the Museum of Science. So maybe your butterfly was very similar to one of those or completely different, but embracing their beauty, their uniqueness, and maybe recognizing that all of us here tonight, we have this beauty in us and that uniqueness. So I would like to thank you for your practice. Um, James will um, change uh, the screen soon, uh, perhaps, or keep it for our Q&A. Uh, we're going to pull out some uh, questions or sharing that you have, either regarding the practice that you've done or any sharing, comments. How was your experience like today? What did you notice? Did you enjoy the meditation or not? Um, what are your thoughts about the meditation? Um, so anything that you would like to share, question, comments, sharing, and I will take a look. So let's see what we have. Um, so this is a question from Joanna. She said, do you have any advice for meditating among stacks of laundry and chores? Is the secret in thinking of the details of the place? <laughs> um, so this is a great question. When we practice mindfulness meditation, we uh, chose tonight to have a formal practice but it is very possible to practice in an informal way. So when we practice in an informal way, we pay attention um, on purpose to, let's say, the activities that we are doing. So for instance, in the stack of laundry, it could be picking up the clothes with attention, and then if they're clean and fresh, 
folding them, really sensing your hands with the fabric of the clothes, maybe noticing the fresh smell, uh, recognizing the colors, and as soon as the man is wandering, maybe getting caught into future plan or past stories, just bringing it back. And it's a wonderful way to uh, appreciate chores <laughs> or have a new outlook on chores and not spending half the time ruminating about something else. Thank you for this question. So let's see what else do I have a question. Um, Question from Randy. Do I practice Qigong or Tai Chi? No, Randy, but I am a mindfulness meditation teacher and a Pilates master teacher trainer. Practice uh, mind body um, exercises. Um, so let's see. Next question. Okay, this is a question from Amanda. She asked me if I have any tips about setting up a space conducive to meditation in a small home with project and work. Yeah, actually, Amanda, wonderful question. Um, if you are interested in practicing mindfulness meditation on a daily basis, I would invite you to um, have a little space in your home, however small it is where when you see it, even if you pass in front of it, it's invited. So maybe it's a cushion, maybe it's a comfortable chair, um, a blanket, or maybe like my area here, this painting for me is very inviting. Um, so choosing a space that you can feel at ease and quiet. And if you need to adjust the space around, that's also not a problem. And that may cue you as you see to remind you, yes, that's time to practice. Why not now? Even if it's two minutes, five minutes. Um, okay, the next question. Uh, a question from Anne Mary Joyce. Again, wonderful question. I am new to meditating. What is a reasonable length of time to start with? And what is a good length of time to work up to when meditating? Okay, great question. Um, this, of course, will depend from uh, person to person. Any amount of time that you can take in, if you know that five minutes is doable for you right here, right now, three minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, um, I would encourage you. Earlier, we uh, talked about the attention um, span. And in that study, they said that uh, after practicing five days in a row for 20 minutes, there were already differences shown in the research. So perhaps start with a uh, amount of time that you know is reasonable and you can commit to, so you feel successful and perhaps over time you build up to it. Thank you for this question. Uh, what else? We have so many questions. Um, it would be wonderful if mindfulness was taught in school. Why isn't it valued by society? And this is a question by Sarah. Sarah, yes, I agree. Actually, there is a program called Mindful School and through uh, my uh, company, I have been teaching in higher education and I would love to teach more in school for students of any age and also for um, teachers. I think that would tremendously that would change completely the world of education, but also the world out there because we can take our practice anywhere, anytime. Uh, let's see, let's take a few more. I'm sorry I will not be able to answer to all of those, but perhaps we can do this event again. Let's see what else we can answer. Um, a question from MG, is it normal to feel sleepy during meditation and breathing exercises? Should I resist falling asleep? Wonderful question. So as a lot of you know, uh, we work maybe a lot or we are stressed out and we tend to do a lot in our days where we are very stimulated with a lot of distractions. And sometimes that is taxing on our resources and we tend to like sleep. So guess what? When we take a moment to sit and meditate, sometimes we are falling asleep because our body is reminding us that we are deficient in our hours. That is something that um, maybe with more sleep that can change and also with the practice that can also change. Um, resisting falling asleep, you know, if you need to fall asleep and taking care of yourself, perhaps start there and explore 
different time of the day where you could meditate and see if that changes. And also questioning, am I sleepy now? And what it's like when I'm sleepy? Can I send that in my body? Do I feel my body maybe heavier, my breath deeper? We can become very curious of meeting the experience of sleepiness, what it's like, how does that show up and learn something from that. Uh, let's see next. Um, oh, thank you from Cecil, Cecilia, I'm sorry. Thank you, this was excellent. I felt very relaxed, looking forward to next time. Me too, I hope that we can do this again. I would love to come back for you all. Um, I'm very grateful for this opportunity and Yes, you can feel relaxed from the meditation, but it's not necessarily a goal because sometimes as we are learning to meet that experience as it is, it's possible that some of you were actually feeling uh, quite restless right now and that's fine too. Um, but if you feel calm, wonderful. Okay. Um, so a comment from Anne. I'm having trouble staying focused during my mindfulness practice because of everything that's going on in the world. Any tips on letting go even for a few minutes? Absolutely. And when we sit, we have time to meet things as they are. So if on that day we are very distracting, just bring kindness to it. You know, you notice the mind being distracted or the body being restless. We can name that. So maybe saying thinking, distraction. And then gently bringing back the awareness to a point of anchor. At the beginning of our meditation together, we spend a few moments exploring sensations to our feet or our hands or our breath. So we return back to the breath, to the sensation in the body as many times as needed without any judgment, with kindness, without getting frustrated. And just what it is, uh, our mind will tell us, you know, show us our thoughts and we don't have to believe all those thoughts and we can just return as many times as needed into what's going on in the present moment while we're sensing. Thank you for this question. Uh, let's take one or two more. I see the clock is ticking. Um, oh, from Laura. I am a passionate gardener and I am 100% focused when I am tending to my gardens, even within. I look at this as meditation. Sure, absolutely, in any activity that um, we are pursuing, there is a moment to wake up and sense what we are doing, being with what is, really listening to um, maybe our partner, to our child, to our friend when they are sharing a story, uh, noticing a bird flying in the sky, sensing the cool air in the room, and maybe if it's gardening, being with the flowers, the plants, and even the weeding. <laughs> um, all right, let's take one more. Uh, so this is a sharing from Meg. Uh, this was lovely, and I especially love the idea of bringing the qualities of the butterfly into myself. I'm very grateful for this experience tonight. Thank you, Meg, for this comment. And yes, uh, knowing that the qualities that you have found for that butterfly, if you have found them, it's because you already have them in you. They are here with you anytime. So when things feel a little bit overwhelmed or when you wish to reconnect to peace, calm, whatever is that quality, you can just take a moment to close your eyes, even if it's five breaths and sensing that those qualities are here with you anytime. Thank you so much for those wonderful questions. So um, we are almost uh, at the end of our evening. I wish I had more time to answer them. Um, but uh, on that note, uh, I would like to really thank you all for showing up tonight. It means the world to me to do such event for the Museum of Science and to try to bring a little bit more self-care, health, well-being, peace in this world, in this moment. So please uh, take a picture of uh, the screen right now, uh, save the links, either a short screen from your computer or go grab your phone and take a picture. Um, I will be doing a summer solstice retreat on um, Saturday, June 20. It's a half day retreat. Uh, there is a very, very small registration fee and it's by donation only. It's open to all, I really wanted to make it accessible. 
Uh, so please invite your friends, spread the world around, register, and then you can uh, visit my website. The link uh, is on um, the opposite side. Uh, if you feel so inclined for any caring support through the nation, I'd be very grateful. And uh, more importantly, follow me and like my pages on the social media. I would love to bring more of mindfulness and living of awareness practice out to the community. This is the work I'm inclined to de dedicate my life um, and I care so much and I hope that uh, this moment that we've shared you can spread it out uh, to your friends, to your family, to anyone you meet tonight. Um, I would like to uh, take a few moments to Thank you again, but also to send special thanks and acknowledgement to my friend, to my family, uh, in particular to my friend Sabra. She uh, gave me the inspiration for this event tonight. I would like to thank my very dear teachers and mentors at the UCLA Mark faculty, in particular Diana Winston and Tom. Thank you so much. And also the faculty from uh, the MBSR programs, UMass Medical School at the CFM, which I've learned so much from I am forever grateful for your teaching, for your embodied presence. Thank you for giving me the courage to do this and to take a leap of faith. And finally, I would like to thank the Museum of Science, in particular Bethany and James, for their wonderful support and for making tonight possible. Thank you so much. And now, James, uh, if you would like to close the event for the night, this is all yours. Thank you, Maite. I know everyone out there is joining me and, and giving you a big, huge round of applause. Thank you for such a, uh, an inspiring and a much needed night. We really do appreciate it. And yes, I look forward to more collaboration as well, both virtually and hopefully on site um, in the future as well. So everyone, make sure you please, like uh, Maite said, take a photo of the screen and make sure you follow her everywhere. Um, I want to thank the Lowell Institute one more time for making tonight possible. And thank you uh, to all of you for joining us and spending your Thursday night with us. We hope you will continue to do so. And we see you again soon. Until then, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well. Have a great night.